Negra. And as usual, you're listening to Exactly Amara, a production of iHeart. Thank you for tuning in. And of course, don't forget to give us those five stars. Subscribe to the podcast on your favorite podcast platform. And um, you already know, go check me out on the YouTube channel where you can hear, watch the other episodes. And all you have to do is go to the search bar and write exactly Amara or and, of course, write Amara La Negra. So you can see my music videos and everything else I've been doing with my life, except the gossip. Don't believe the gossip. Because, you know, right now I'm a hot topic. I am going viral. I am in everybody's mouth. And, um, you know, people be doing it the most. I am not even going to front. The people be doing the most. But the important part is that I know the truth. Okay? And because I know the truth, we've got a special episode today. I know some of you may be curious about everything that has been going on online about, you know, a certain someone uh, I may or may not wink, wink, be dating. Well, today he's joining me on this show. I want to do something different, something refreshing, and kind of give you uh, the energy that we be having, you know, away from cameras, just how we really are in, in life. Um, you guys already know him. You know him from Love and Hip Hop. You know him from his past. Very, very public relationship with uh, an amazing female artist, which is Nicki Minaj and his music and everything else. Guys, welcome Safari to Exactly Amada. Today, I really want to get to it and I want to enjoy this episode as much as possible because I know, I know, I know you guys um, have heard my journey of, you know, my love life and everything else I've been through. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I know it went viral when they saw me kissing a man that uh, he's a sex symbol. Uh, he's Jamaican, he's strong, he's very healthy. Today, I really just want to be on some friendly vibes. Um, I really want to, I want you guys to get to know him the way that I have. Can we say that you love yourself a lot? You know what? I have to love myself because I used to not love myself. I wasn't happy. I did a lot to overcompensate my happiness that wasn't there. I was an empty, lost soul, very shallow. But now... Oh, because you're not shallow no more. I'm I'm definitely not as shallow as I used to be, you know? Okay. I just like to see beautiful things, and I like to look in the mirror when I see that beautiful thing. So far, I mean, I, honestly, I, I would have loved to do, like, a just straight relationship type of podcast with you because there's so much to talk about. But in this occasion, I want to ask you... Um, I know that there's a misconception between the safari that the world gets to see and the safari that I've gotten to know. What do you think the, the, the misconceptions are about you? What is it that people think about you that you know is not true? I think people think I'm just some wild rabbit sex animal who lives in a sex dungeon and, and just goes through woman after woman. What's the truth? At the end of the day, if you really pay attention to my, my life and where people pick and choose what they want to see... I'm a relationship kind of guy. Like, I was in a 12-year relationship. Then I went into another. I was in a relationship for two years that nobody knew about. Then I was in another long relationship. Like, I've been in relationships. So anytime people see me, like, in the layup line, trying new balls before I go for the slam dunk championship, it's like they just picking and choosing what they want to see me with, you know? Do you think that you've made good choices as far as your love interests, you know, these past years? How do you think you have evolved or, or what? What? I just want to know your perspective, right? Because you're saying that everybody feels that, you know, you're just out here juggling balls. You know, they haven't seen they haven't seen you actually being in solid relationships that you had, you know, behind closed doors. So with that being said, do you think you've made good decisions when it comes to women? If I was perfect. Even though I say I'm perfect and I like to look at myself and think that I am perfect. You're so Jamaican. I can't really say I've made mistakes because there's a reason why the word breakups and things not working out exist because everybody goes through trial and error. And, you know, I've, I've been through situations where I thought, hey, this is going to work out. Then it ended up not working out. We have sex and then the sex isn't there. They don't have a hustle. They don't have a drive. They... They want too much and aren't given given anything in return. It's like there's just so much people out here who just their hands are like this. But what are you giving back? Mm, look at that. I would have never known. 
Well, um, and now that you're in Miami, right? How much more do you like Miami? What what has Miami brought to you? The different flavors, the culture, the weather. I see you have a beautiful view back there. I feel like, honestly, being Jamaican, Miami has given me the closest vibe and energy to Jamaica. I was living in Atlanta before. There's no culture out there. The Caribbean culture out there does not exist. And, you know, I didn't really gel with it too much. Um, I lived in L.A. for 10, 10 years. Same thing. The culture's in New York, but New York is too cold. The weather has a lot to do with being in a good mood and just keeping my mental on a, a very sane pattern. I think that we all go through different experiences that make you appreciate more the things that you have. I think it comes with maturity. I think it comes with growth. And I love being able to see this side of you. I still think you're o- you're always going to be cocky. You're always going to be, you know, extra because that's just who you are. No, let me explain something to you as far as people who think I'm cocky, which I'm very much not. So I used to be in a headspace where I was very insecure about everything in me and everything around me. When you're a man who is with a powerful woman and, you know, of course, I'm, I'm talking about Nikki. That is that is something where it's very easy to lose your self-confidence because you're with someone who is just larger than life, where it's easy to forget you exist. And you just, you know, put yourself on the back burner. And when you're just doing that for so long, after a while, you forget about yourself. And then it's like, what about me? And then when you realize that it takes a long time to get back to self-loving, you know, and I just self-love all over myself now. Maybe a little bit too much, but how about this? For those that are listening right now, um, I love that you hit that point because that's something that has happened to me in the past. And any 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 of the ladies that are listening right now, if you've ever been through a situation where you are the breadwinner or you may you know have more money uh, or have a better job per se than your significant other, at 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 moments, especially when it comes to men, men have this thing about their ego, and you have to boost it up and make sure that they feel empowered and make sure that they feel the man of the house. But it's just we're naturally a man. A man doesn't want to feel like yo. I'm the little bitch at home while my woman is doing everything under the sun and I can't do anything. Okay, well, well, in that case, because for me, I felt like I don't mind that you don't make as much money as I do. I don't mind. I don't mind none of those things. I'll help you get, you know, get money. I'll help you level up. I don't have a, I, I, well, I have a problem with that now somewhat, but I didn't before. So with that being said, then they try to compete with me. I mean, you should be proud that your girl got it like that instead of trying to compete with me. So for those men that are listening right now, and are going through a situation where they feel like their girl, their wife or whatever, you know, is in a better situation financially. What type of advice can you give them on how to, you know, handle this situation in a way that you both are comfortable? Advice I could give them. I don't know. Like my situation was like. That's like a one in a billion kind of life. Not, not really, because it may not be to the status of like, OK, you may not be Nikki, but there's a lot of women out here who are making millions of dollars behind closed doors. That Fame and success and wealth are different things. Let me tell you something about them women there, right? Whenever a woman is making all of this money, right, a woman ain't going to go and talk to some regular dude who's working a regular job. But then when there's a guy who's making all of this money, he'll go to a car dealership. A pretty girl will sell him a car and he'll say, damn, I like this girl. I want to get to know her. And they'll boom, 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 lift him up, take care of him. Like, that's how Christian Cristiano Ronaldo, he met his wife. She was working in a clothing store, and he was who he was. But if she was the one who was making a billion dollars... No, 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 no. Wait a minute, wait a moment. Stop. I did it. Been there, done that. I was, a, you know... Uh, uh, what is it? Como se llama esto? Build a bear. I did it, okay? I was the one who was famous. I was the one who was financially stable. I was the one who had a good head over her shoulders. I just liked who you were. And guess what? That backfired on me. Ladies, you already know, don't be out here building these men because you already know the moment you help them, you help them get their shit together. Mommy, they're going to be gone to the next bitch that they actually really want. Don't trust it. Men, women, on the other hand, I'm not saying that it doesn't happen because a lot of women will come for you just to get what, the, you know, get as much as they can get out of, out of you. But they'll stick because they're nurturers, because of the children, because of the stability, because of many other things in comparison to man. You build a man and the moment he feels, you know what I'm saying, he starts to feel himself, he's out of there. First of all, when it comes to cheating, there's a certain 
men like Jamaican men. Jamaican men don't cheat. Oh, please, Safari. No, please. Let me finish. Jamaican men don't cheat. And I just like to like let people know that if you are ever so lucky in your life to experience a Jamaican man. Ha! Safari, do all men cheat? It dep- I don't, let me tell you. No, that's not true. I oh! No. Ladies, pay attention to the red flag. Pay attention to the red flag. You saw him say, oh, oh, I took too long to answer that. Okay, now tell me the truth. I hear people say that, but I really don't think, like, all men really don't cheat. You know what? All men have maybe, you know, cheated in the past, but I feel like when a man is happy, yo, people, I'm telling you, when I'm happy and you're straight and you're good and you're respectful, yo, nobody can't even reach my line. Straight up. So what makes a man want to cheat? A man like you. It's not about wanting to cheat. Maturity is the number one thing. Maturity and age has a lot to do with it. When you get to a certain age in your life, like me right now, like, I have to, there has to be more than you just looking good for me to say, okay, let, 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 let's, you know, let's exchange energy because that's what sex is. Sex is an energy exchange. Yes. Like right now, I'm looking at you through the screen and I'm feeling an energy exchange without us having sex. I wish you were right here right now on this chair with me. I wish we were laying on my golf course. I would love to be in your face and having this conversation because you're just you know, so beautiful to look at. But I'm sorry, I'm, going, I'm getting off topic. But making men don't cheat. Which, by the way, this brings me to a good topic. Um, and funny enough, I know that most people won't believe us when we say this because everybody has this thing since you're a very overly sexualized, you know, uh, man. Uh, people see you as a sex symbol because you are. I think that to a certain extent, people see me as a sex symbol or I can't be very sexy. I just have my sexy you, moments. Listen, you, you hide it. And I'm, I keep telling you, stop, <laughs> stop acting like, because let me tell you, there's certain things you do. People looking at you, I know they like, you know, they get turned on by it. Like. Oh wait, wait, you don't get turned on by me? Was that was that what you were just saying? Oh no, no, I didn't. I don't want people to know what I'm what's going through my mind. Oh okay, okay. I'm only saying this. You're funny. I'm only saying this because I have spoken about it openly on on my podcast about you know being celibate after you know having my girls. I just feel like people would never believe us together not having sex because they assumed that we would, but. I'm in a stage right now in my life where I feel like I really, I really want it to be meaningful. I think it's important to get to know, you know, whoever it is you're going to be with because it, it is an exchange of energy. Have you ever been with someone and all of a sudden all, everything just goes bad after you have sex with them or everything can just go great? I think that some people's baggage sometimes sexually, it, you know, it crashes. So anyways, I just think it's important for people to get to know each other and bond before you just Go ahead and have sex. And I also know of a lot of relationships that have had sex the first day. I've been together 20 years later. It's whatever works for you. Now that I also, you know, we, we've seen you um, on your social media and everything, being a great father, you love your children and everything else. How do you feel that fatherhood has changed the safari from before and the safari we see now? I feel like with being a parent and with being in the public eye, it's like if you see it, you see it. If you don't, you don't. I just feel like when it comes to just fathering and just just parenting in general and your children, when you're in the public eye, I just feel like that shit is nobody's business because people and their weird energies, it, it, could, it could transfer, like, onto your kids. You just never know. So, like, when it comes to that, like, even it's like sometimes I have some moments, you know, where it's like, okay, I just want to show people some stuff, like, you know, with my kids, like when my daughter's birthday happened, and it's like, you no, know, that was nice. I wanted to, like, you know, just let people see that and then celebrate her. But then at the same time, it's like these a lot of people don't deserve to see that. Like, that's that's my joy. You know what I'm saying? Because people are very finicky. I don't I don't do nothing in this life for people that say, wow, you're doing so great. Good job. I really could give a shit what anybody thinks about anything I'm doing because I know what I'm doing. Um some of my biggest and greatest accomplishments I've done, like I've kept to myself and I feel like it got to happen because I kept it to myself. In your case, because I know how it's been for me, but we both do reality TV. We both, um, and I always want to clarify, reality 
TV, keyword TV. We get paid to uh, entertain, to uh, let people see an extension, a little bit of our personal real life. Yes, no, maybe. It, the show's not just about us. It's a whole bunch of people. So they got, they cut bits and pieces and put it together and whatever. Do you feel, do you regret being on reality TV show, do you think it was beneficial? Um, what would you have done different? How do you feel about reality TV now that you've had so many years, you know, in this industry? I just, I don't, I don't like the turn that it's taken. I feel like before it was, um, we were bringing like realness onto it. And then, you know, of course, enhancing it because with film and television, you got to make it entertaining. But I just feel like because it started in the beginning of time as reality TV, People just really hold on to it and grasp it. And no matter what, oh, this is what we see. So it's real. I feel like people are getting tired of it. But do you regret it? Do you regret being on reality TV? No, I don't regret it um, because, you know, pretty much everywhere I wanted to go, I've been. I've been, you know, I've been on every uh, franchise that I wanted to be on. And I feel like it's opened a lot of doors. Um, financially, it's done a lot for me. Is there anything you would have done different? Because I know, let me tell you about me while you figure yours out. I know off the top of my head what the hell I would have done different. One, um, my first season, I never showcased any, you know, I know that it's love and hip hop, but I didn't have a significant other. I think that once I brought uh, my ex to the show, the first man that anybody ever saw me with on the show, I think that that's one of the reasons why it didn't work out. I think it wasn't going to work out regardless, but being on TV and the pressure of society looking into our relationship, our, you know, the, the our arguments, every relationship goes through their ups and downs, but just having it on national TV just makes it so much worse. So... And the same thing happened with the father of my children. I would have not, especially him, I would have not never brought him on TV because guess what? That was my job. That was my life. That's my career. And I brought someone into a world that they weren't prepared for, nor were they meant for it. And sometimes a little bit of light can get men's ego higher than what they should be and get them slightly confused. And the same thing goes for women. So... Definitely wouldn't have put my my real, you know, love life on national TV. How about you? I really don't give a shit because it's all in the past and now I'm happy. So you're happy now? I'm so, I'm so happy that I keep it to myself. I'm so happy that people, they don't believe I'm this happy because in their eyes, they should think I'm not. But there's nothing like peace. Nothing like it. There, it's the most, it's the most rewarding thing on the face of this planet. So what do you think about me? Um, I think you're a very peaceful person. Meeting you as, you know, it has brought peace as far as our one-on-one -on -one and just having a relationship. Because I remember, I don't know, relationships, relationship, kissing ship, rubbing on each other's ship. I don't know, whatever you want to call it. But I feel like with you, when me and you weren't talking, it, bo it bothered me. We and weren't I'm talking? When were we not talking? Because if people don't know this. There was a time that we weren't talking for a second. We were mad. Well, I was mad at you. There was a time me and you, we were like friends. We were talking all the time and, you know, just really just, you know, being like real friends. And then um, I don't remember what it was, but we had just stopped talking. I remember when I had to do, um, what's that show in L.A.? The talk? The real? Oh, I did the real. I remember we were at the same hotel. I remember I got out the hotel and you was in the lobby. And we walked past each other. We didn't even say nothing to each other. I do remember. It was some gossip. Some gossip. Some he say, she say of one girl who was like, oh, you know, why are you talking to Safari? You know, I like him. This and that. And I was like, I haven't even done anything. Yeah, but I saw you. You were rubbing on him. And I'm like, first of all, are you talking about the BET experience? That we had the highest ratings of all time? Period. So, yes. <laughs> so, yeah, we weren't talking for a while. And then um, here comes Jamaica. What was that? Three, that was three, four years later, time flies. Got yeah. to jump the film. We were supposed to be filming that show together. And I was really looking forward to seeing you. And your energy just was so off. And I'm like, damn, why the hell is she acting like that? And I told you I missed you. And you was like, what do you mean you missed me? <laughs> what? I'm like, I missed you. What the hell? I haven't seen you in bad long. The more you said it, the more angry I would get. <laughs> the more you're like, no, I miss you. What the hell does that mean? 
I remember, I remember. I was only mad because those who saw the show, um, Chaotic came up with a game where they had said they gave a whole list, a whole dictionary of all the women that Safari had hit on the franchise. Allegedly. Okay, allegedly. And they added me on the list. And and even though I've seen people question it on social media, oh, you was lying. No, I actually was really upset and I got mad at Safari. But see, that just goes to show. Look at how they added you to it and that wasn't true. Right. It's just, you know, to a lot of people, it, it was entertaining. They just say a bunch of names and you know, they said shit up wasn't even true. So at the end of the day, so wait, they added me to the list. I got pissed off. You DM'd me and you started sending me messages. I sent you a paragraph. I said, yo, I need to talk to you right now. Yes, like, you did. God. Boom, 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 boom. I'm like, yo, why are you acting like that? I said, I never said that. Why would you think that? I forgot what you said, but I just was like, Where, oh, I told you. I just was like, yo, I would never lie about having, first of all, I wouldn't even say I had sex with somebody nevertheless lie about doing it. I said, yo, I would never say I had sex with you and I would never lie about it. Like, I don't go around saying, yeah, I had sex with this person. I said, like, I don't, I don't do that. I'm glad that we were able to reconnect uh, recently. And one thing led to the other. Um, I'm so grateful that you came to my girl's birthday party to surprise us. It, our moment went viral. Even though we had, you know, several cameras in our faces because we were filming for Love and Hip Hop. Um, it was a beautiful moment. And how do you deal with the negativity on social media when it comes to you dating someone publicly? How do you deal with that? Because I know that sometimes emotionally it may bother me, but it doesn't bother you. You know what? Honestly, I feel like I like after a year ago, I never was like deemed as a villain. I, I kind of liked it. It was spoilers. It was, you know, it was rewarding because... To see how much emotion I, like, infuriate out of people that don't know me, it just shows, like, damn, like, you don't even know me, and look how upset I got you. That means I have that much control over you. So that's how you see it? Yeah, I kind of, like, you know, in my mind, I'm just like, you know what? I'm better than you. I don't care about what you're going to say, so I'm not, you know, it's not even going to reach me. Um, sometimes it bothers me. And to be honest, being around you and that's why it, to me, it was so important to take my time because I feel that in many occasions, women will come to you and men as well. In my case, for the hype, for the name, for your history, for your background, for your finances, for the look, for whatever, for the clout. And don't ever bother to actually get to know you, the person. What do you like? How do you feel? What have you been through? What do you, what do you, what are you fearful of? What are your ambitions? What are your goals? How do you feel? You know, how do you get along with your family? Like, like getting to know someone is not even a thing anymore and I know that I'm a little bit traditional because of the way that I was raised but to me it's important to get to know to know people and not judge them based off other people's opinions or experiences with them because I believe that certain women can bring out a certain a different side of a man and the same thing goes for a woman I have known many women that were out here you know what I'm saying living their best life they found this one person and they just want to, they don't want to lose them. They stick to it and they evolve and they grow and they change. And I think that is important to allow people and accept people for, um, for their growth. You know, I know that you may have known this certain side of them, but also appreciate someone's growth. For example, a lot of people don't know that you're really into church. Do you go to church every Sunday? Yeah, I invited you to my church. And my, my, uh, my church, my pastor, they love you. And, you know. It's, it's nobody's business. I don't got to promote and I don't got to post in my story. Hey, guys, look, I'm in church. I don't go to church for a bunch of strangers on social media who don't know me. I don't take a picture of how much money I'm putting in when I pay and donate to my church every Sunday. That's nobody's business. I do a lot of nice shit. I give away. I do charities. You know, let me let me just touch on one thing because it's like. I see people say it's so weird. It's like, oh, people, you're doing this for a storyline and blah, 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 whatever. Okay, number one, you're you've been a star on the show. Number okay, number two, I've been a star on the show anywhere I go, no matter what. Number three, you're already on the show. You you don't need me to be on the show. So it's like me and you really know each other in real life. 
To be honest, I really enjoyed talking to you. I love the fact that you were vulnerable, open, you know, judgment-free zone. You were just being yourself because here at Exactly Amara, I don't give a fuck about none of that. You know, I'm just going to be exactly who I am, unfiltered, uncensored, organically me. And I liked also the fact that you were able to tell your truth right now without it being edit, without it being cut, without it being triggered for anything else. This is just your real opinion of how you feel. This ain't no clickbait, you heard? Now, is there anything else you would like the people to know? What's happening in your life? Because I know you're busy. What is it, blessed, booked, and busy? One of the biggest and most amazing things in my life right now, um, I don't even want to tell anybody. It's so amazing that... I'm you're doing keep... great things for the community. I, I'll say that much. Safari, so where can the people go follow you? Check out your music, by the way. You have great music out there. Um, and you have mad new projects coming out soon. So where can they check you out? You ain't got to follow me. You ain't got to check me out. Leave me alone. Now I'm just kidding. Um, hit me up. Safari. Everything is Safari. Everything is Safari. Don't worry. I got some new heat dropping before the summer. I like to always drop something new around Memorial Day weekend. All right, guys. Well, make sure to find me on YouTube by searching Amara La Negra or Exactly Amara. You, you guys already know. You, you guys know how this works. Uh, follow me on Instagram at Amara La Negra ALN. And remember that this has been a production of iHeart's My Cultura Podcast Network. And for more podcasts from iHeart, visit the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen to your favorite show. You already know it's your girl, Amara La Negra, and you just heard exactly Amara. Amara.